we've got something new this year. This is the third award ceremony, and we've added a different taste to it. We're going to bring on a man who in his playing days led from the front in both deed and in word. His bowling alone ranked him as one of the greatest cricketers that the world has ever seen. That might be an overused word, but it is not in his case. He mixed electric pace with vicious swing. In addition, he was a batsman who mixed courage with thrilling stroke play. And if that wasn't enough, he was one of the country's greatest ever captains who led from the front. They won the World Cup, if you remember, when he told them to fight like cornered tigers. They did that in 1992. From cricket, he went into a career in politics and philanthropy, creating the first cancer hospital at home in Pakistan. With his vision on cricket, please welcome the incomparable Imran Khan. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. My, before I explain my vision for cricket, um, just a brief history of how I've seen cricket evolve uh, over the 20 years uh, when I was playing. Mm. In my opinion, there was a watershed in cricket. In the late 70s, the Kerry Packer synth the Kerry Pecker phenomena, where suddenly cricket began to change. But before Kerry Pecker came in, um, cricket was played completely in a different way. It was a, the pace of cricket was completely different. Um, the style of cricket was different. So there were three areas in which uh, cricket changed because of Kerry Pecker. After Kerry Pecker, one day cricket came in, night cricket came in, coloured clothing came in. Fitness of cricketers changed. The way running in between the wickets changed. Ground fielding standards changed. And then professionalism changed after Kerry Becker. When I went to play World Series cricket, which was uh, in 78, the test match I played for Pakistan at home, I was paid $50 for the test match. And after Kerry Packer, of course, salaries changed completely. Professionalism came in. Players could concentrate on cricket. So I reckon that was the watershed. And from there, cricket evolved in a different direction. One day cricket came in, and one day cricket grew and grew. More people, the more people watched, the greater the number of one day matches. And in the last 10 years, never has there been so, many, so much one day cricket played as now. But what has suffered in the last 10 years, in my opinion, has been fast bowling. During the time of Kerry Pecker, never were there so many fast bowlers in cricket history as at that time. Uh, helmets came into cricket simply because there were just that many fast bowlers. And I, re I remember in one, the first year of Kerry Pecker cricket, about seven or eight players had serious facial injuries. Now when you look around, you do not see that many fast bowlers, and in my opinion, the main reason is number of one-day matches. What stops a bowler bowling fast? Injuries. You watch a bowler come in one year bowling very quick, has one serious injury, and you see the next day his pace will go down. And in my opinion, the reason why you do not see as many fast bowlers now, despite great fitness standards, more money in cricket, is because of the number of one-day matches. Um, the other thing, in my opinion, that has changed for the better are the, is the umpiring. Uh, during my time in cricket, one of the greatest reasons of acrimony on the cricket field was umpiring. Uh, whenever a home umpire made a mistake, the touring team usually thought it was biased. And, um, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as to say that there was a lot of uh, cheating, but I would certainly say that during my time, uh, most of the umpires tended to be patriotic, especially on crucial occasion. And let me say that when Indo-Pakistan matches took place, the umpires were more patriotic than normal. <laughs> so what has happened, the, the best thing in my opinion that happened was that you now have neutral umpires. And the standard of umpiring has improved. You can see on television, 
uh, I would like to see cricket spread to other countries. I think the 2020 format is a brilliant way of uh, spreading countries to, co uh, to countries like United States, to China, because it is a very easy form of cricket for people to understand. The reason why cricket, I think, never went into other countries was because the five-day format, which except for the last 20 years has always been the prevalent format, is impossible for uh, novices to understand. Secondly, I would like to see more technology come into cricket. I think that uh, uh, the, the less the amount of human error, mistakes made by umpires, the fairer the decision, the fairer the results. So I thought the ICC came up with a brilliant idea of the three appeals. Thirdly, I feel that uh, it's very important that the way uh, first-class cricket is run in countries should be changed. Uh, I, having played cricket, county cricket, Pakistan cricket, seen domestic cricket everywhere, and then played shield cricket, I came to a conclusion long ago that the way to improve standards is by having high-class, competitive domestic cricket. The reason why Australia have consistently produced great teams is because the quality of shield cricket is the best in the world. I would like to uh, finally thank ICC, I congratulate them. It was a great tournament, very well fought tournament, unexpected results. Thank you very much. I feel it's a great honor. Thank you for inviting me here and allowing me to speak about my vision.